Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I'm Jane Stewart and I'm the Director of Foundation Year. And I'm so pleased to be with you this afternoon. Um, we've got some great um, presentations to share with you today. Um, to be, to be able to inform you more about our Foundation Year programs. Um, and to get a first-hand look at how our virtual classroom operates. Um, we set up our virtual classroom because we didn't want COVID to interrupt or slow down our students' transition to Monash University. And we wanna to continue to provide new students with the opportunity of a guaranteed pathway into the university. A quality education continues to be our priority and everything we've done in the online environment is built on the same approach that we use in our face-to-face -face classes. We have the same teachers, the same curriculum and the same quality support. In fact, we actually strengthened our support model so that students receive tailored individual support. Um, sorry about that individual support from a range of um, support services. Um, we have um, learning advisors, counsellors, student engagement specialists, all dedicated to supporting and encouraging our students. In today's session, I'm joined by my colleague, Cesar Yeza, who is one of our foundation teachers. And Cesar will be, talk, will be taking you through an introduction to human evolution which is one of our topic areas in biology. So you'll get to experience the virtual campus. You'll also be hearing from Salem. Salem is one of our students um, and he'll talk to us about his experience in the virtual classroom. We'll also talk about support service available to students to make sure uh, that um, um, your experiences are the best possible experiences within the college. Um, our team has one goal in mind, and that is to give you a fantastic learning experience that sets you up for undergraduate studies and your success. Now, I'm gonna hand over to Cesar, who will take us through the virtual classroom. Thank you, Cesar. Hi there, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Jane. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Cesar. I'm glad to have you join us today for a sample on human evolution. Uh, I'll take you through a virtual classroom taster today uh, and I'll show you what it's like to uh, use Zoom in our classrooms uh, here at Monash College. So oh, we've lost that, sorry about that, we'll just get back to that. I'll just bring that up again, sorry that just seemed to have disappeared. Okay, so like I said today my aim is to uh, walk you through a virtual classroom taster and show you how we use Zoom to teach our lessons. So you'll see a chat function on the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the session, please put your question into the chat box uh, and we will reply as best as we can and get your details uh, as well. So, like I said, let's talk a little bit about human evolution. So before we get into any of the nitty gritty, uh, I thought I'd do a little bit of a quick uh, poll with you or a, a, a quiz with you. Uh, so here we've got a few images of our human ancestors. Maybe some of these names are familiar to you. So we've got Homo neanderthalensis and we've got an Australopithecus afarensis. So two individuals, these are artists impressions, uh, our human ancestors. Like I said, I just want to do a quick poll first. So I'm going to ask you two questions. What is the alternate name, or sometimes known as the scientific name, given to modern humans? So that would be us. And who is our closest human ancestor? So I'm just going to send a little poll to you now. A little window will pop up on your screen. Uh, here it comes. And please choose the response or uh, the answer you think that's most appropriate. So there's no wrong or right answer. Go ahead and choose what you think is the correct answer. So we're getting a lot of votes. I'll share the votes with you in a moment. Yes, there are a lot of competing ideas that I can see here around who our ancestor is. Good. Okay, so 
Thanks for voting. Uh, here we go. So, looks like we've got most people saying that uh, our alternate name or the name given to modern day humans is Homo sapiens. And uh, you'd be correct. So Homo sapiens is what we are known as. Uh, Homo habilis, which some of you have chosen, Homo habilis is a more ancient human ancestor, one that is extinct and no longer with us. Who do you think is our closest ancient human relative? Uh, yes, chimpanzees seem like a good option, uh, but it's human relative. So in this case, we would have Homo neanderthalensis. So again, most of you choosing that response. So thank you for that. Thanks for uh, contributing to that poll. So yes, the answer again to these questions is uh, our name is Homo sapiens. So sometimes we are known as Homo sapiens sapiens. You may have heard of that term before. That's just a, a name for, I guess, a subspecies of an ancient Homo sapien that used to exist. Uh, and Neanderthalensis, more commonly known as Neanderthals, or some people say Neanderthals. So Neanderthals lived uh, up until about 50,000 years ago, uh, and they are our most recent uh, common uh, ancestor or human ancestor. Oh, I can see some of you are making notes on the screen. That's all right. That's all part of the, the experience. So uh, yes, you can draw on the screen. We've also got another member here of uh, Homus, uh, the human uh, ancestry, Australopithecus afarensis, uh, a much older human. Uh, about 3 million years ago is when an Australopithecus afarensis existed. So just thinking a little bit more about all of the different ancestors that we have, here we have a uh, hominin family tree or a hominin evolutionary timeline. I'm using the word hominin because hominin often refers to uh, ancient humans and modern day humans. It's a, a more collective term for all of these individuals. So you can see this uh, timeline, the oldest being on the bottom, so about 6 million years ago and up here modern day. So here you are, Homo sapiens, modern day human. You are the only remaining uh, member of this hominin family tree. We've got the Neanderthalensis right here. You can see how closely related they are, but they went extinct about 50,000 years ago. There might be some other names here that are uh, familiar to you. For instance, Homo erectus is quite a a famous hominin or, or human ancestor, Homo erectus, known well for discovering fire or using fire first. And then this red group here, a collection of very old hominins or human ancestors. Uh, you can see there they are called the Australopithecus group. Uh, and there are uh, several Australopithecus fossils that have been found. So all of these images here are representations of fossils or fossilized skulls that have been found of these particular hominins. Here is a reconstructed skeleton of a Australopithecus afarensis. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the nickname for this is also Lucy. Uh, and Lucy is quite a famous Australopithecine. Just take a couple of seconds to look at this skeleton and just think a little bit about what might be similar or different to a modern human skeleton or body. So when I look at this image, I see quite a few differences. I see, for instance, that the arms are quite long, uh, the fingers are quite long as well, and this is not the same with, with us, with modern day humans. Our arms are much, much shorter compared to our legs. We also have a very large jaw size here, a, a jaw that uh, is protruding, so it's sticking out. If you look at our timeline on the left, you can see a lot of the older humans uh, have a very protruding uh, jaw. So their, their jaw shape, uh, their face shape was much more different to us. If we think about Homo sapiens, our face is uh, on average relatively flat. So whilst we look very similar to this human ancestor that lived three million years ago, there are some differences. Uh, and that's really interesting to see. And at our college, we have replicas of these fossils. And you can uh, look at these fossils and compare these fossils to modern day humans uh, as well. OK, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a group activity now uh, using something called a Padlet. Now, we use Padlet a lot uh, in our classes, and it's a really good way for 
uh, students to collaborate with one another and the teacher. So I'm about to send, to send you to a Padlet. I'm going to put it into the chat for you. So here it comes. Okay, there it is in the chat. So if you don't mind, please just clicking on that link that's popped up in the chat box and it should take you to this following page. So hopefully you are there now. Again, just click on the chat and then open the link and you should come to this, what we call Padlet. So I've got two questions for you. Can you name some primates? So us humans are also part of the primate family. Family, And the other question, what features of your hand are shared with other primates? So here are some human hands and then here are some uh, chimpanzee hands and some uh, orangutan hands. So just to contribute to this, and I can see, Mark, you've already done it. Well done. So if you click on the plus icon or plus button on the bottom, and then you can write in that box uh, wherever you like. You can write in the title or where it says write something. So go right ahead, and I'll give you, again, a couple of seconds to contribute to this Padlet. And I can see a few answers already. So feel free, contribute to both questions. Uh, yep, and we've got some things there on the right as well. Good. So we have lots and lots of ideas here. Well done. So maybe these pictures might help you to answer question number one or question number two as well. Uh, pictures uh, can allow us to make those comparisons, I guess, bef be between the hands. Okay. Feel free to continue to contribute. I'll just go through some of your answers together. So Mark has said something. Alistair had says gorillas. There's a, that's an example of a primate. We've got apes in general, monkeys, gorillas, orangutans, monkeys, orangutans, apes, etc. Lorises, good. We've got some extra primates that not a lot of us maybe know about. Lemurs, well done. So many, many answers there. Well done with that. And there we've got uh, on the second question, fingerprints are similar. Looks like we have the same amount of fingers. Good. So when we look at our fingers and we compare to other uh, primates, we definitely have the same number of digits or fingers. Uh, thumb movement. So uh, a, a word for that is opposable thumb. So that's correct. We have or we share this opposable thumb. The next time you're at the zoo and you happen to come across the orangutan or the gorilla, uh, feel free to take a closer look at their hand and see what their thumb looks like and how uh, it is similar uh, to you. You might notice that orangutans also have grasping uh, feet, which you don't have. Great. Thank you for contributing to that. All right. So let's have a look. Okay. So thanks for that. So that, that's an example of what we call a padlet. Um, and again, humans are part of this larger primate family tree. So here we are on the top right hand corner, humans very closely related to chimpanzees and bonobos. We share a really recent common ancestor about eight to six million years ago compared to some of the other apes and monkeys that you see here that we don't share as recent a common ancestor. Uh, Examples of primates that sometimes we, we forget, tarsiers and lemurs and lorises, you might not think they're related to you, uh, but they definitely are. It's just they seem to diverge from our ancient common ancestor almost 63 million years ago. So that's a very long time ago, and that's why they look so different to us. We all know about monkeys. Monkeys are probably the most popular primate out there, and you've obviously heard of orangutans, gorillas, etc. So... That's just a little bit about human evolution and in particular how we're related to um, other primates. So now we will hear from Salem, who is going to talk about his experience while studying uh, in the virtual classroom. So I'm going to pass now to, to Salem. Uh, thank you, Salem. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Salem. I am from Saudi Arabia. I completed foundation year in Monash College virtual classroom. I want to share with you my experience studying in the virtual classroom, including completing uh, a group assessment on ICT, uh, digital systems, uh, becoming a student leader, and then becoming a senior student leader, and hosting virtual clubs and societies. There are many useful tools of the virtual classroom, 
One of my favorite is the raise your hand function, as you see it in the right side of the slide. This is because uh, actually I don't like to interrupt the teachers while they are talking and teaching. So I use this tool to grab their attention. And when they are ready, they will turn to me so I can ask my questions. By doing that, I will definitely have my chance to ask the questions and I will not hesitate to ask. Another thing that I like in the virtual classroom is that the teachers share their screen and I can take screenshots of the slides as much as I can, which has really helped me uh, when I revise uh, the exams. So I can find all of the information I need compared to my notes in face-to-face -face, uh, classroom. There are also a range of tools helping us to complete group work and collaborate with each other, like the breakout rooms uh, function, which are the online version of working in groups. We also use a learning management system called Moodle. You can see it, uh, the logo in the right side of the slide. Uh, we use Moodle to access all of the learning materials for each of our subjects. It contains videos, readings, and lecture slides, which I found them very useful and also creative and interesting. Furthermore, my teacher were really creative and they have a positive attitudes and they always trying to link the class content with the real life examples, which makes it easier to understand and also enjoyable. One of my favorite ass assessments was on ICT digital systems. I formed a group with two other students and we developed a presentation on network components and how to connect multiple devices to the internet. I really enjoyed every single minute in this assessment as it gave me the opportunity to think creatively and put myself in the shoes of the item. Uh, I actually, I was the internet modem and I had to communicate with my group members, which are, or they are uh, the router and the switch to explain how I function and how and why I connect to other devices. It was really interesting. Here are a couple of pictures from the assessment. And I think you could guess from our faces how much we enjoyed working together virtually. We met on Zoom to brainstorm and discuss ideas, divide the task, and create a schedule for completing the assessment. We met three times a week, and we also stayed connected by sending each other uh, on WhatsApp to schedule our meetings and discuss some details. This assessment taught me how to communicate with others, work well in a team, and think outside of the box. Okay, I also become a student leader and then a senior student leader, which involved leading clubs and societies, such as the Culture Exchange Club and the Art and Craft Club. In the Culture Exchange Club, I got to teach other students about Ramadan, which is a holy month in my religion, which is Islam, and also a festival that we have after the uh, holy month, Ramadan finish, which is called Eid. And it's really good chance to teach other about uh, our culture and also to learn from other about their cultures and about their religions. In the Art and Craft Club, I taught the students how to write Arabic calligraphy which was really fun, both for me and other students. And as you see in the picture uh, down, they wrote their names in Arabic. And I was very surprised because it's not easy for us, the native. And uh, that was uh, really uh, interesting for me. And I really enjoyed it. As student leaders, we all complete many trainings in different aspects and skills, such as mental toughness, which I found extremely valuable as it taught me how to improve my psychological behaviors. Since becoming a student leader, I've noticed my confidence grow a lot 
and I have developed skills in leadership and my teamwork and communication skills has improved. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoy studying in the virtual classroom with Monash College as much as I did. Thank you, Salem, for sharing. Thank you, Salem, for sharing your experience with us. Uh, it's clear that you've had quite a good and positive experience and you've had quite a bit of fun with some of the work, some of the assignments, and you've you've made some friends and you've also learned some leadership skills, which is which is uh, pretty good. Uh, well done, Salem, and thank you for, for sharing uh, your experience with us. Thank you. So our, our commitment at the college is to support uh, you to achieve your best, regardless of if you are studying with us in the virtual classroom or face to face. So while you are studying from oh, studying online from your home country, uh, you'll still have access to all the support services available at Monash College uh, to help you along the way. We have a dedicated student engagement team and the student engagement team and student services team, they organize a range of clubs and societies for you to join, to learn new skills and meet students from all around the world. We also have learning and career advisors uh, who you will be able to contact to make sure you're on the right path to Monash University uh, and that you're on track with your degree. And to be successful as a student, you need to feel supported in all areas of your life. That's why your health and your well-being is a priority at Monash College. If you have any problems or concerns, our counselors offer free confidential counseling to help you with your personal, academic, and emotional challenges uh, as a student. And of course, there's us, the teachers. Uh, we are always willing to support you. Uh, we value our students. We love talking to you. We love, we love uh, to uh, work with you in solving not just your academic problems, but also helping you out uh, throughout your semester and year here with us. So we're always here, willing to help. Okay. So, um, thank you for joining us today. As you can see on the screen right now, um, there is a QR code that you can scan. Uh, and you can scan this QR code to visit our virtual classroom webpage. Here you'll find the most recent updates about the virtual classroom, as well as some frequently asked questions, which might help answer some of your questions. We also have student testimonials on that website, so you can hear from current students like Salem uh, about their experience studying online. Thank you for joining us. We hope that this has given you a better understanding of what studying in the virtual classroom is like at Monash College. Um, if you have any further questions and you'd like to send them through to us, you can send them to marketing at monashcollege.edu.au and you'll get an answer as soon as possible. Also, make sure you follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, and the like. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hope to see you soon in the virtual classroom at Monash College, and hopefully as well as in Melbourne, when we can meet face-to-face -face, uh, again. Thanks for your time. Uh, have a good day.